Hello and welcome to the third part of the sim building video tutorial series. Today we're going to work on the configuration of the syslog ng so we can send logs into the Elasticsearch destination. Last time we did install the Elasticsearch and we configured Kibana as well. Today we'll actually send data to Kibana um, to Elasticsearch and visualize it with Kibana. This is also another thing I wanted to show. This is the Grafana dashboard built on top of the data available in Elasticsearch. I'll include this as well at the end of the video tutorial series. So you can build pretty good you know, dashboards and charts with Grafana with, you know, based on the data available on Elasticsearch. Kibana is a good candidate for analyzing, visualizing data, but it is a better tool to uh, create dashboards and charts. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's go and look at the configuration that file that we left last time. So just doing a quick overview here. This is the source statement. This is an example TLS source statement. We're not going to cover TLS source today. This is the destination statement, and this is the actual log statement that combines the source and the destination and actually does the routing. As you can see here, we can only see this source. Um, this is the system and this is the internal. So internal logs to the syslog ng and the system logs of this system. But there is no network source configured yet. We'll go ahead and delete this network configuration from here. We'll create a simple network source. So in order to configure that, we start with the source statement and just uh, you know, convention, start your source name with S underscore destination with D underscore and stuff like that. So source underscore network. Most of the statements with the, on the syslog ng and with a semicolon. So the source statement starts with a curly brace and then ends with a curly brace and the semicolon. When it comes to network source, we are actually going to have to define the uh, interface and the IP address. interface you want to listen on and the port. So for example, UDP, IP, let's just give it a space, 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0. This means listen on all interfaces and port 514. Close that. Similarly, TCP, 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0, port 514. Basically now what we, have, what we have here is we have a UDP port 514 listening for syslog traffic and a TCP 514. You might want to use the TCP 514 as much as possible because that kind of, you know, more reliable delivery is compared to UDP. But some devices may not support TCP and you might still want to have UDP 514 available for those cases. That's it for the network source. We can also go ahead and configure a file source so it's easy for us to test out various logs, you know, ingestion file. I'll just create a TMP input as the file source for this example. So we can just put in log there and it'll be ingested into the Elasticsearch. Now let's go ahead and create the Elasticsearch destination. Destination block starts with a destination keyword and then D underscore e Elasticsearch or whatever you want to name it. I'll just name it ES. And we're, for the Elasticsearch destination, there are two ways to go with this, go about this. There's the Elasticsearch 2 plugin, which is the Java-based plugin. And there's the HTTP one that does the REST call to send the batch of logs over the HTTP. This video tutorial is going to cover the Java-based plugin. Uh, I might create a separate video to go over the HTTP one, but you know, well, for this video, we'll just do the Elasticsearch plugin. Elasticsearch 2, actually. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now we have to specify different parameters for the Elasticsearch 2 plugin. We have the client lib directory directive that will specify where your Elasticsearch library is located. If you followed my video tutorial to install the Elasticsearch, you should be in line with my configuration. So it should be available in Elasticsearch lib. 
Similarly, we want to specify the client mode to be HTTP. Even though we say HTTP here, it's still the Java plugin based HTTP. Index, we're going to specify the syslog dash ng is the index. So if, you go, if we go over here, we can see there's, um, not here, Elasticsearch, there's this index. This is the index that holds all the sample uh, logs that we installed when we did this, when we imported the sample logs from the Kibana installation. Similarly, when we configure this uh, index name, syslog dash ng, it'll create a new index and store all the logs on that in, in that index. No semicolons here because it's not a closing statement. Then we'll do the type. So we can just say log. Another important parameter is the cluster. This has to match with the entry that you have in your elasticsearch.yml file. Template, we specify the template for the data being routed. Elasticsearch stores data in the JSON format, so we'll specify the format JSON and we'll say the scope is RFC 3164 for the JSON format. Scope is NVDS pairs. Exclude, we're going to exclude the R underscore date from the log and we're going to rekey it to ISO date. And we are going to send a new line character. Another option you can specify is the time zone. I'm in the mountain time zone, so I'll specify MST. You can specify UTC or any other time zone that you may like. That's it for the destination Elasticsearch. Now we need to actually connect the source and the destinations, basically a routing statement and log statement helps us there. Log, and then we'll open and close it. So for the log, we specify the source, s underscore file. Let's also take the file source. Also the source s underscore network. And we'll say it goes to destination d underscore es. Let's go ahead and save it. Now that we have completed the configuration of the syslog ng, it's time to reload the configuration. You can simply restart syslog ng, but it's not recommended to just restart syslog ng for simple changes on the configuration file. So first step is to ensure that the configuration syntax is correct. So we can go ahead and do syslog ng dash dash syntax dash only. This will check the syntax. So I wanted to show this error as well. Um, so we have a missing semicolon here, right? So let's go ahead and fix that. So it's pretty handy to be able to check the syntax and correct any mistakes before actually restarting the syslog ng. If you had restarted syslog ng while you had an error, it would stop syslog ng, but then it wouldn't start. So it's always good to do the, do the syntax check before reloading or restarting the syslog ng configuration file. Let's go ahead and fix that here. And which is why I also you know tend to uh, do the starting and closing first as underscore test. You do this and then semicolons. So then, you know, once you're done with it, you are not forgetting semicolons or you know, ending brackets. Let's check the syntax again. So slog ng dash dash syntax only. The syntax is correct now. Now we can go ahead and either restart syslog ng if you really want to or we can just reload the configuration file. There are three different ways to reload the configuration file. I'll show you all three of them. So the first way is the regular system CTL, CTL re reload syslog dash ng. System CTL reload syslog dash ng. Okay, you know what? The syslog ng is not running at the moment, which is why um, it didn't reload, but I'll just go ahead and start systemctl start syslog ng, and I'll show you how you can do the reload. Now that syslog ng is running, hopefully, 
system CTL status, syslog ng. You can't really reload you know, a service that's not running, right? So we just had to start it. Now let's go back to reloading the configuration. System CTL, CTL reload syslog dash ng. Okay, that reloads the configuration file. The other option is system syslog ng ctl and then reload. So it config reload initiated. And then the other option is to send a hop signal, kill all hop syslog dash ng. My bad in that, double L. And that does the same thing. Now, if we look at it, we are going to have 514 listening on DCP and UDP, and your syslog ng is ready to ingest logs from network source. Let me go ahead and actually start another virtual machine on my network so I can show you how to configure the client side to send logs to the network log server. While the virtual machine is starting, we can use our file input, TMP input, to send logs. Let's check if it actually created an index even without the log. No. Okay. There's no logs yet to send to the Kibana. So let's go back here. Let me get some logs so I can put it in there. Let's see. We may have some log secure. Grip minus I as sets. All right, we can just put this log TMP input. Let's paste a, oops, let's paste a, let's paste a couple lines here. That should be enough. Okay, now let's go ahead and reload that and see if it created. So there you go, it created an index, syslog-ng, and it says the status is open, primary is five, replica is one, docs count four, and you know, um, other things. Now the other thing is you need to go into the index pattern and actually create an index pattern. Before I go into that, I would like to tell you a little bit about this index. So we created an index in our syslog configuration, syslogng.conf. We just said the straight syslogng as the index name, right? The problem with this approach is that your index size is going to grow over time. You can always you know, perform queries, risk calls to delete log entries between this date and that date. But if you create the index in a pattern, that you know stores your logs in a monthly index name or daily, it'll make your life easier to manage those indexes. So what we can do for that is actually, we can just go ahead and use the variables available in the syslog entry. So we can say year, we can say month, and you can say day if you would like, or you can just skip day and then do a monthly index so you can clear out older indexes on a monthly basis. You can just you know play around with the settings and then see what fits your need. Let's go ahead and save it. Make sure the syntax is correct. It's correct. Let's go ahead and delete this index. We don't want this. You can go ahead and delete it from here. Confirm. Now let's go ahead and re reload the CTL reload. And we need to give it some data again. It kind of keeps track of where it read last. So save that and it should create. So now you can see that there is a year month and day in the index name. Now we can go ahead and create index pattern in order to be able to search with the Kibana. Index pattern, create index. Once you go here, you can see we have two indexes available. We will go ahead and create syslog-ng underscore. This should cover all of our indexes. Go to the next step. 
And then the time field is the ISO date. We rekeyed our, our underscore date into the ISO date field. So we select that, we create index pattern. Now we can, it, it tells us that there are 28 different fields available at the moment, right? So we can go ahead and select syslog ng. Let's do last hour because we kind of backfilled the, let's do this month. So we can see that our logs are available here. These are all the metadata available. And here's the JSON blob of the log. So here's this full message. We will also along the video series write parsers to parse out. Like, you know, for example, you want to be able to parse this IP address. You want to be able to parse the username and then you want to be able to parse whether or not the um, password was accepted. So we'll come to that in our, probably our next video, we'll, we'll work on the parsers and stuff. Um, let me go ahead and show you how to configure the client end so it can send data to the syslog server. If you can see here, the here should be like a host from, it's from the local host, right? Let me check um, my other virtual machine should have started by now. Okay, so I have logged into this other machine here. Most of the times you will find our syslog um, in the client servers, but it should be the similar configuration. We'll go to the rsyslog.conf. We'll go to the bottom. You can just see here, you can do star dot star, meaning all the logs, or you can do star dot info, the level of log that you want to send to, right? So for this purpose, we'll just do a star dot star. And one single add symbol means that you will be, you want to send logs over UDP. And then the two add symbols means that you want to send the logs over TCP. Let me go ahead and check the IP address. the AP address. So we'll go ahead and put the and the port is 514 system CTL restart or reload our syslog and it's probably not running. Restart our syslog. Okay and if we look we may be able to see that the connection is established to this guy. Okay, now if we go ahead and duplicate session to this guy, we should see this event on our Kibana. I want to go to the syslog ng. And February 8th. So you can see that the log was retrieved from, this log came over from the 107 host, which is this guy. So that's how you can configure your other servers or the clients to send logs to a central log collector server. And that's how you can visualize your logs in the Kibana. But there are other features here. You can visualize logs and whatnot. We may be able to go over that in our next video. I hope this video was useful. If you haven't watched my previous video tutorials of this series, go ahead and watch that. Like always, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.